Welcome to this 21st lecture on calculus of variations. In this lecture, we will look at the examples of isoperimetric problems. We have seen in the last video how we can solve the isoperimetric problems. In this video, we will look at the examples of such problems. This is a famous example. Suppose we have a wire of length L. Okay, you see it everywhere, uh, like electric, electrical wires and so on. And this wire is suspended between two poles. Okay, this is pole 1 and this is pole 2. The length of the wire is fixed L and we would like to know what is this curve. Okay, we want to know like uh, how this curve will look like if we, uh, if we suspend a wire between two poles and the length of the wire is fixed. Right, so obviously the wire will take the shape such that the potential energy of the wire is minimum. That is the law of nature that everything wants its potential energy to be minimum. So uh, here we want to minimize the potential energy and the constraint is that that the length of the wire is fixed. So this is an isoperimetric problem and the boundary condition. This is one boundary point and this is another point. So we have two boundary points. We have to minimize the potential energy and we have to have the fixed length of the wire, right? So let us see what will be the potential energy. Suppose the linear density that is the mass per unit length of the wire is sigma, okay? And capital L is the length of the wire. If mass per unit length is sigma, then this if uh, I consider this d as small length of the wire, then the mass of this small part will be del sigma s. This is the mass. And the height is y mass g h. Height is y. This will be the potential energy of this small piece of the wire. This is the mass. This is the gravitational constant. And this is the height. So this is the potential energy of this small piece of the wire. Therefore, total potential energy will be sigma ds gy from this point A to this point B. This is what is written in this slide. So basically, we have this sigma as the linear density of the wire and L is the length. Therefore, if sigma is the linear density, then uh, the mass of the small part of length ds will be sigma ds and therefore the potential energy will be mgh m is this sigma ds g is the gravitational constant and y is the height right so we have this i is equal to the total potential energy suppose this is point x1 this is point x2 that will be sigma and g are constants they'll come out x1 to x2 y ds now ds you know ds is dx square plus dy square square root and I can write it like this is y as such and this ds I am replacing with this and taking dx out. So I have 1 plus y dash square dx ds dx. So this is my i. This is what I have to minimize. And I should have this point y1, this point y2. So I have this y of x1 is y1 and y of x2 is y2, right? And what more? I have that the length of the curve is l. So I have that x1 to x2 ds x1 to x2 ds is l right so that x uh, ds is again i am replacing with this so i have to minimize this thing these are the boundary condition this is the extra condition which has to be satisfied so therefore this is an isoperimetric problem let us solve it so uh, my g will be okay I should not call it g if you want to keep the notations anyway. So what I have to basically do, this is the function, this is the integrand which I have to minimize, which function I have to minimize, this is the integrand which is in the constraint. So basically I have to take f plus lambda times g, okay, this was my g uh, according to original notations, just call it phi, this is phi, right. Now I have to uh, apply the Euler's equation on this new integrand, so I have this Euler's equation because this is independent of x. So uh, we know that the Euler equation will be of the form phi minus y dash phi y dash is equal to constant. If you don't remember it, you can either apply the original form of the Euler's equation or you can go back to the videos and check, right? This is the form of the Euler's equation when the integrand is independent of x, right? So you just apply, just put, this is your phi, right? Minus y dash times derivative of phi with respect to y dash, right? You can just uh, check the calculations. Just do some manipulations here. Take the LCM and do the calculations. You will you will be left with this thing. Sigma gy plus lambda divided by c is equal to square root of 1 plus y dash square. I am squaring both sides. I will get this thing, right? So, 
So you have y dash square is equal to sigma g y plus lambda divided by c square minus 1. Square, uh, you can take the square root, you will get dy. This is variable separable differential equation. You have to solve it. You will get dy upon this is equal to plus minus dx. Now you can put this thing. This thing is equal to cos hyperbolic theta. This is just to solve this differential equation. So if you will put this thing is equal to cos hyperbolic theta, you will get sigma g upon c dy is equal to d theta times sine hyperbolic theta. The derivation of derivative of cos hyperbolic theta is sine hyperbolic theta. So dy will be c upon sigma g sine hyperbolic theta d theta. So you will get dx is equal to plus minus. I am replacing dy with c upon sigma g sine hyperbolic theta d theta and this will be cos hyperbolic square minus 1 ok so cos hyper hyperbolic square minus 1 is sine hyperbolic square and square root will give you sine hyperbolic theta so this will cancel so you will get dx is equal to plus minus c upon sigma g d theta so x is equal to you can now just integrate it ok so you will get x is equal to plus minus c upon sigma g theta plus a now your theta is cos hyperbolic inverse of this thing so you, you have x is equal to plus minus c upon sigma g cos hyperbolic of sigma g y plus lambda upon c plus a. You can take the a on other side and then sigma g upon c then plus minus sign also. So and then cos hyperbolic also you will get sigma g y is equal to this plus lambda upon c is equal to this. Now you can take uh, c and lambda on other sides you will get this thing. Now you can divide with this sigma g you will get. y is equal to minus lambda sigma g plus c lang, uh, sigma g c divided by sigma g cos hyperbolic of this thing right so you can just uh, make it first term and make it second term just to have like a usual like familiar notation so this is you know this is the equation of a catenary now you have three constants the c is a constant a is a constant and lambda is a constant right how you will determine these three constants you have these two boundary conditions and this is your subsidiary constraint. You, you have to put this, uh, use this constraint to obtain these three arbitrary constants and there is your answer. So, we now know that whenever we uh, suspend a, a wire, electrical wire between two poles, the shape is a catenary. Okay. The parameters of the catenary will depend on that what is the uh, density of this wire and what are these two points and so on. Okay. Right. Now, let us look at more examples simple examples just to have an idea how to solve these problems okay. i am sure already you know how to solve these problems right for, for example we have this problem that we have to find the extremal of this functional subject to these boundary conditions and this subsidiary condition right so you have this plus lambda times this you have this first functional lambda times the constraint functional so you have to apply the Euler's equation on this. You will get 5y minus dy by dx of 5y dash is equal to 0. Right. So you just apply here on this 5. You will get 5y is 2 lambda y minus dy by dx of 2y dash is equal to 0. That will give you 2 lambda y minus 2y double dash is equal to 0. You will get y double dash minus lambda y is equal to 0. Now you have you can just solve this differential equation. You know how to solve this differential equation. This is linear differential equation of order 2. So you have this auxiliary equation d square minus lambda is equal to 0. So you have d is equal to plus minus lambda square root of lambda. So your solution is a e raised power square root of lambda x plus b e raised power minus square root of lambda x. Now you can use this boundary condition y of 0 is equal to 0. That will give you y is a plus b is equal to 0. That will give you b is equal to minus a. Therefore your y is a e raised power square root of lambda x minus e raised power minus square root of lambda x. This is your a. I can use the definition of sine hyperbolic sine hyperbolic x is e raised to power x minus e raised to power minus x upon 2. So this is 2 sine hyperbolic square root of lambda x. I am calling 2a as b. So I get this solution y is equal to b sine hyperbolic square root of lambda x. Now y1 is equal to 0. It implies that b into sine of hyperbolic of square root of lambda is equal to 0. Now this implies either b is equal to 0 or this thing is equal to 0. If b is equal to 0 then y is equal to 0 because then this, this will be 0. In that case, this area under the curve from 0 to 1, square uh, area of the square is not equal to 2. So, the constraint condition is not satisfied. So, this is not possible. So, this is not possible. So, we must have that sine hyperbolic of square root of lambda is equal to 0. Okay. From here, we can compute the value of lambda. So, you have sine hyperbolic of square root of lambda is equal to 0. So, you get square root of lambda is equal to i pi k. This is the, these are the values where your sine hyperbolic x which is 
e raised to power x plus e raised to power minus x upon 2 minus e raised to power minus x will take the zero value where k is integer so your lambda is minus pi square k square so you get y is equal to this was your solution so you get y is equal to b sin hyperbolic i pi k x now you want that now this b has to be obtained so you you have this another constraint that square root of the integration from 0 to 1 y square dx should be 2 so you can just put here okay i should put it should be b okay so you you just do the integration you know i uh, you know how to integrate just you have sin hyperbolic square you change it into cos hyperbolic so this will be you just integrate everything and you will get b square this is b square this is b square this is b square you'll get b square is equal to minus 4 so you'll get b is equal to 2 eta so your y is equal to 2 eta sin hyperbolic i pi x there is this relation between sin hyperbolic i theta is equal to i times sin theta so i can use it here so this will be i sin pi x so i i will be i square eta square that is minus 1 so y is equal to minus 2 sin pi x this is a required solution okay let us look at one more simple example okay so this is another example you have to find the extremal of this functional subject to these boundary conditions and this extra constraint right so again you will write your phi as the first functional plus lambda times this constraint functional so you apply the Euler's equation on this functional right phi by minus dy by dx of phi by dash is equal to zero so apply it here minus 2y plus lambda minus dy by dx of this this thing will be 2y dash is equal to 0 right from here you will get y double dash plus y is equal to lambda by 2 i'm calling it lambda again it is anyway it is a constant right now you have to this solve this differential equation this is a linear differential equation of second order plus here we have a right hand side so you know that the solution will contain a complementary function plus a particular integral how to obtain the complementary function you have to solve this Euler's equation uh, auxiliary equation that will be d square because we have second derivative plus 1 is equal to 0 that will give you d is equal to plus minus iota so your y will be c1 cos x plus c2 sin x this is your cf complementary function then you have to find the particular integral that will be 1 upon d square plus 1 operated on the right hand side right hand side is lambda lambda is a constant so i can treat it as 0 e raised to power 0 x so you know that 1 upon fd e raised to power a x is equal to 1 upon f a into e raised to power a x provided f of a is not 0 here we have this 0 so i can put 0 here so this will be 0 plus 1 which is not not 0 so this is equal to lambda upon 0 plus 1 times e raised to the power 0 x so this is equal to lambda so this is my p i so my solution becomes c f plus e i okay uh, okay so this is the solution this is if anybody has problem we can go to the differential equation and, and see how to solve linear differential equations okay of order higher than one right so now we have this two constants c1 and c2 and this third constant lambda so we have to obtain these constants using these of uh, bounding additions and this constraint so i have y of 0 is equal to 0 that will give me c1 plus lambda is equal to 0 and y of pi is equal to 1 that will give me minus c1 plus lambda is equal to 0 i can add i will get lambda is equal to half and c1 is equal to minus half so i have y is equal to minus half cos x plus c2 sin x plus half the c2 i have to obtain so for that i'll use this uh, constraint so uh, i want 0 to pi integration of my solution should be 1 so you can just integrate minus half integration of cos x will be sin x 0 to pi plus c2 integration of sin x will be minus cos x from 0 to pi plus half integration of 1 will be x 0 to pi is equal to 1 from here you get c2 is equal to this so you can just put the value of c2 and this is your required solution okay thank you